Hey guys, well, welcome to another video. Today we've gone and found ourselves a little spot here in uh, Katai National Park, I think it is. Um, this is not going to be a, a, a review or a video on the campground necessarily, but uh, I thought what I'd do today, because I've had a couple of requests, is do a video on my uh, DIY 12 volt system. So yeah, um, but before I get into that, this is not a bad little camp spot for a day trip. Um, it's literally probably not something that I would actually um, camp at, but for just doing a, a, a day trip, um, not a bad little spot to set up by the river. Uh, we're here in Cat Eye, um, just out of Sydney. It's literally like a 30 minute drive from my home, so uh, it was a great place to set up and do a quick video. Um, bit of a rest by the river. We've got the Hawkesbury River behind us. Um, yeah, so the campground itself is nice, I guess, if you just want to come out and do a day trip. Um, there's a bit of a fishing spot down here beside me, uh, down by the river. But yeah, what we're going to do today is a, a video on the um, on the DIY 12 volt system, so let's get into it. Alright, so this is the box we've got. Um, the reason I went this route, uh, I guess, and not a fixed install, was I wanted something portable. Um, something I could take in and out of the vehicle, um, move around the house if I needed, but I wanted, you know, decent capacity uh, and decent um, output options as well so I went down the DIY route and I started with a, a DeWalt box from my local hardware store um, this is the DeWalt Tough System 2.0 box um, I can't remember but I think I paid around $110 Australian for it um, and obviously that comes empty it's just a, an empty box but it's um, part of the, um, the Tough System I guess that you can expand and add other uh, boxes to um, which I haven't done yet, but I, I may do in the future. Um, but we'll go for a bit of a look around the outside and then we'll look at what's on the inside and how I put it together. But as I say, this is not a, um, well, you know, this is not going to be a, a how to build a 12 volt system um, because to be honest, I really don't think I have enough experience to be able to tell anyone how to do this. This was my first attempt uh, at a DIY 12 volt system and um, yeah, I was learning along the way. So. Uh, there were a few videos online uh, going through how to build one and, and you know you can check those out there's lots out there and there were a few ready to go systems available on the market but I wanted to uh, I guess build one for myself I enjoyed the, the build process I enjoyed research and, and learning uh, about 12 volt systems um, but I'm in no way shape or form uh, an expert or uh, even close enough to give anyone advice on, on how to build one. But this one's been um, going really well. I've probably had it for a couple of months now. I've been out on several trips uh, and it's been um, absolutely brilliant. In terms of what I use it for, uh, it's really, uh, I've got a 50 litre fridge. So it powers my fridge 24-7, uh, camp lights at night, uh, and then um, just charging various devices throughout the day, my phone, camera, um, gimbal, things like that. Uh, and honestly, you know, I've got a, a solar panel here that I'm going to hook up and and uh, show you the charging aspect but in reality unless you're going for more than four days I've not really ever had to charge uh, this system up there's plenty enough capacity to run for two or three even four days uh, with what I do uh, without having to top it up but let's do a bit of a look around um, so starting with the top um, what I actually did was I've got um, a passive vent here just to allow air to um, to come in, I've got an, another uh, I've got another vent or an active fan here. I've got a little um, 30 mil fan, I think it is 40 mil fan uh, that draws air in, um, and we'll look at that when we do the um, inside view in a sec. But that basically keeps the controller, the solar controller and charger, uh, cool. I've got a battery monitor uh, from Kings. Most of the stuff here is is Kings. Um, it was cheap. Um, and so far it's been reliable uh, and on the top I have a single 12 volt socket uh, down the front I've got another um, socket here for USB type C and type A 
uh, which has a, a battery voltage indicator on it. And then I've got a exhaust fan uh, down the bottom uh, and that's a little 80 mil uh, exhaust fan that's uh, active. Um, I do have that uh, powered up to a switch on this side uh, so I can run that fan manually. Uh, actually it powers both the fans um, or I can have it on automatic and there's a thermostat in there and we'll talk to that in a sec uh, but that kicks in when the the controller and the charger gets to a surface temperature of 50 degrees. Uh, down this side I've got two additional cigarette lighter or CLA adapters, 12 volt. Um, I've also got just a little cable tie um, clip here which is just great for my USB cables uh, so I don't have to go looking for those when I need them in a, in a pinch. Um, they hold the cables fairly well. Around the back of the device I've got a um, so a master switch here, which allows me to just turn off all the power to the battery when it's in storage or not in use. Uh, I've got another uh, pair of USB sockets here, USB Type A, um, you know, one amp and a, and a 2.1 amp. And then I've got a um, an input for my alternator. Um, not actually using that at the moment, but if I ever want to connect uh, the car battery up from the alternator, uh, I've got that option there as well. Down this side. I've got an AC in port, so if I do want to charge the pack from the mains at home, uh, I can plug my battery charger into there and that'll charge it up. I think my battery charger is about a 10 amp charger, so uh, it's not super fast, but that's okay. I just keep it topped up before I, I head out. I have my solar input um, on this side as well, and uh, I've got another cable tie for a, uh, another cable. I keep one micro and one type C cable handy, uh, just because I've still got a mix of devices. All right, so let's take a look uh, on the inside. I think that's everything from uh, the outside. Uh, so let's open it up and see what we've got on the inside. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a wiry mess, but uh, we'll go through it. So as you can see up here, this is the, um, that smaller fan uh, that draws in cool air, and that's blowing directly onto the 25 amp uh, uh, controller and charger. Um, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and just uh, epoxied in a, a thermostat uh, directly to this because this you know, really does get quite hot, uh, especially when you're, you're charging from mains or you know, from the alternator um, and solar. To that I've gone and it's just attached some, some heatsink just to help dissipate um, you know, more of the heat off this, uh, off this controller. Um, I've got a, a fuse box uh, which runs fuses for all of my outputs from a 12 volt um, and things like the solar uh, or the, 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 the AC in for example um, I've got direct fuses uh, connected up to that so everything's fused uh, I've got the, um, the shunt mounted here and I've kept my runs as short as possible um, from everything to the battery uh, this is the, the, the main switch um, and uh, yeah you can sort of get an idea on how everything sits with this box and the 100 amp hour lithium battery that I've got, it just fits. Originally when I built this, I, I wanted to be able to put a inverter in here as well, but there's just no way I was gonna fit an inverter uh, into this box as well. As you can see, it's, it's really tight uh, and there isn't a lot of room to play with. So I think I've used the space um, you know, as, as best I could. Actually, you know, cutting these things out wasn't very difficult, cutting the holes, I just got, you know, a hole saw with various sizes, uh, just drilled the holes, uh, the holes that I needed, cut out any of these plastic fins that were in the way, um, and in the case of the, the passive vent, I've just used some hot glue to keep that in place, but everything else has uh, screw nuts on it to, um, to help it keep it fixed in, in place. Where there are bends, um, it's a bit rough, but I've just gone and put some um, conduit around just so that when those uh, those wires do close down uh, they're not uh, they're not getting pinched uh, but having said that I really do not open and close this uh, very much so um, the chances of having fatigue on those on those bend points uh, is relatively low um, yeah so that's pretty much it from the inside uh, everything's I do have some you can't really see here but I've got some brackets that hold the battery in place I've got foam padding uh, around the battery and in between 
uh, you know, the fuse box in the battery and the controller in the battery. It is pretty tight. Um, there certainly isn't a lot of room for things to move around. Um, and most of the fuses are, are fairly easy to, to get to. And that's one of the other cool things about doing a DIY or building your own is if you go and buy something off the shelf that's ready made, um, because you didn't build it yourself, you know, if something goes wrong, um, you, you're sort of on the back foot in terms of knowing how to repair or fix it. But given that I've put everything into this box, I know where everything is. Um, should something go wrong, it's uh, yeah, it's relatively simple for me to be able to diagnose and, and, and fix that. So, as I say, probably not the prettiest solution out there. Um, and uh, there's probably a, a few of you out there that would be cringing at some of the cable management. Um, but yeah, for what I do, um, it's uh, it's been performing really well. Now I do travel with this in the vehicle, and I'll I'll show you where I strap that down. So this doesn't go into the back of the tub, and it's it's kept relatively uh, vibration free, uh, so I don't get a lot of problems with with vibration. And usually when I get to the camp spot, I will take this out of the vehicle. I don't want uh, a lithium battery and charger in the car overnight, so I, I, I leave this outside. But um, what we'll do is we'll hook up the um, the solar panel and have a look at what sort of uh, charge we can get out of that. All right, so we've just gone and plugged in the, the solar panel. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but uh, what I've got is a 240 watt solar blanket, uh, just resting on the on the roof for now. And uh, we've got that plugged in. And uh, what are we getting? We're not getting a, a whole heap here today, but what do we got? around 3.4 3.5 amps in uh, it was sitting at around about 10 a little bit earlier but we do have quite uh, a bit of shade here we're not in direct sunlight um, and it's a little bit of an overcast day but that's pretty typical of what we could expect uh, I think on average uh, when I'm not parked under a, a big shady tree uh, I tend to get around 10 amps in and uh, in direct sunlight I can get up to about 14 so that's plenty enough to keep me topped up. Um, so that's, you know, 3.4, 3.5 amps constant in. Uh, that's going to be plenty to keep me, uh, to keep me topped up should I ever need it. But as I said, with two or three day trips and 100 amp hours of capacity, uh, I really don't think I need to keep it plugged in or much more than that. But yeah, that's the battery box. Uh, it's been really good for me. Um, what I'll do is we'll, we'll put it in the car and I'll, I'll give you a look at how we, uh, or how I strap that down and what that looks like when we're traveling. All right, so what we've done is in the back of the, the Raptor, uh, because when I go camping, usually I'm, I'm on my own, uh, so I certainly don't need the back seat. And um, just to protect the seats and to make it a bit easier to transport, I've built this, this aluminum platform just with a bit of ply on top and some carpet and I've just put some shackles in there. Uh, so typically what I would do is uh, over the far end is where my fridge would go and over here is where the, the battery clamps down for travel. And as I say, when I actually get to a, a camp spot, I would usually take that out and leave that um, under cover somewhere. So I'll go and get that strapped in and, and we'll have a look at what that uh, comes up like. All right. So this is uh, the battery strapped in, um, just a single strap on each side. So I just put one of these uh, on each side and um, yeah, I can still get to all the plugs, still use the battery box while it's in the car. Uh, I don't have the fridge in here today, but you could imagine uh, the fridge is, um, um, would be up to the side there and uh, that's where that would go. And it kind of fills that space nicely. But yeah, that's uh, how I would travel uh, with the battery system. Um, while I'm driving and given you know with the suspension and uh, being inside the cabin it tends to get um, you know less impacted by you know vibration and whatnot so keeps it relatively safe I think I hope um, but yeah so that's my DIY 12 volt hopefully that's um, been of use to some of you uh, if you're thinking about doing one I would say if um, if you are looking at getting a, a portable 12 volt system and you know, doing the work yourself is not something that you enjoy. Learning and, and um, you know, constructing these sorts of things, you're probably best off just buying a ready-made system um, from one of the reputable suppliers out there. But uh, for me, half the, half the fun was actually learning um, 
you know, 12 volt systems and, and going through the build process. Um, so if, yeah, if that's something that you enjoy, then, um, you know, I highly recommend doing a bit of research and, and giving it a go. Uh, it was really quite simple um, and, um, you know, relatively cheap compared to some of those ready-made systems out there. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.